On the project site today at Cedar Creek. Cedar Creek's a tributary to the South Fork Eel River and probably one of the more important tributaries because of its really extensive water supply that comes out in the summertime. This is a project that Caltrout's been involved with from the start, from about 2017 when we identified an old hatchery dam as a barrier to fish migration. Back in the 1949-50s era, the Department of Fish and Game built a, a hatchery out here, the Cedar Creek Experimental Fish Hatchery. And they were experimenting with fish releases into the South Fork Eel River, trying to determine the size of smolts that needed to be released downriver to, to ensure a, a return of adults upriver. This watershed is fundamentally important because it has this really, really high summer base flow that results from the unique geology in the watershed. So it has this abundant cold water that comes down in the South Fork, but taking out the barrier will allow the juvenile salmon and steelhead to migrate into this river in the summertime. So it's just really important refugia for, for juvenile salmon and steelhead from the South Fork Eel. So in 2017, we identified this barrier on Cedar Creek as a fish migration barrier. So our first effort was to determine the engineering design for how to remove the concrete dam. We had a grant from the Department of Fish and Wildlife that led us through a design and engineering phase. We secured the permits for that. And then this last fall, State of California had emergency drought funds that we secured from the Wildlife Conservation Board that allowed us to do the construction this last year. I'm Mark Cedarborg. I'm the CEO of Hanford. And we are a construction company that specializes in ecological restoration work. The project involved coming in, uh, diverting the stream flow from the work area and uh, removing the concrete, uh, all the dam itself and the concrete structures associated with it and restoring the stream back to its natural state. So the project created about six to eight construction jobs, which was uh, just a piece of what it took to get the project planned, designed, permitted, and built. The construction portion itself uh, employed equipment operators, laborers, for about seven weeks, and they were all local to this area. Something I feel very passionately about is that the environmental work that happens as part of ecological restoration projects, the piece of that that's often overlooked is the number of jobs that are created by the industry itself. There was a 2014 study by a University of North Carolina that showed that the uh, environmental work like this supports uh, more uh, jobs than coal and logging combined. Cedar Creek here, when we first came, it was just a beautiful, clean, cool swimming spot for us. And uh, so over time, we started to learn Caltrout, Darren started coming out and giving presentations about what he had in mind and what you all were trying to accomplish and why it was important for fish numbers. And so over the process of engineering and the development of this project, we got to learn from those people a lot about how to be stewards also. This is an amazing project and I can't wait to see what it looks like a year from now and in two years from now to take down this dam that you know serves no purpose and was a huge impediment to fish passage. Hopefully we're going to see major improvements in this watershed and I'm really excited to see what, uh, what it holds for the future. Salmonids are an extraordinary cultural resource for us. Not only are fishermen enthused about fisheries but also people like me who don't fish so much but I see them as an important part of a really good indicator of ecosystem health. We were watching your River's Last Chance, and you know when you when you see that documentary, you start to realize that the salmon and the steelhead are like the canary in the coal mine for our, our whole ecology. And so um, you know there's a delicate balance here that that got disturbed a long time ago, and and seeing efforts to restore that balance is uh, really makes you feel good about about everybody involved in this thing and people coming out to do the work.
Really the fundamental approach we're taking in the, in the eel river basin is to try to increase the life history diversity. So we have three species that are all listed in the South Fork eel, Chinook, Coho, and Steelhead. And each of them have different juvenile life histories. They have different habitat needs at different time of the year. Opening up these migration barriers allows them to flourish at different times and different habitats. So we're bringing back the diversity of life histories for each of these species that used to persist here, but, but have been cut off because of these migration barriers over time.